Howdy everybody, it's uh, blackberry season and they're delicious, let me tell you. None of these have been sprayed, they're out in the forest. They don't really waste any time or money or chemicals on blackberry control in Tassie. Certainly not in pine plantations. Anyway, me and Jess have come out here to just have a bit of a walk and a little bit of a nibble. So, um, this lady gets in touch with me, she's got a photo, she emails it through. I've had a chat to her and had a good discussion about it all. She's happy for us to release it. She doesn't want to be known and she doesn't want to um, be a part of it, but she's happy for us to use it just to help uh, keep pushing forward, I guess. So without further ado, let's get into this photo that we've received. So um, not that anyone's going to pay attention on YouTube because people like to steal our stuff. Um, but anyway, it'd uh, be really appreciative if you didn't steal our copyrighted material. Um, this photo here I've put up because this is a really good reference as far as the position of the years go. The animal in the middle. Now, here's the shot. So this is the original shot. Uh, the lady was camped by a small dam. Um in the east part of Tasmania and she was about a hundred meters from the animal when she took the photo it was a very random photo she wasn't even looking she just scanned around with the camera and took some photos with her phone and this shot here I've thrown a filter over it which is basically like an x-ray just to try and bring out some more detail now the thing that makes this very much not a um, wallaby or a kangaroo for me is the large sized head um, compared to the size of the rump um, it's quite a buffy head kangaroos have a much smaller head than their bottom I'm not sure what the ratio is um, someone who knows a bit a little bit more about measuring might know that there you see it again it's zoomed up um, I think the animal's actually moving she didn't actually see the animal in the photo till a few days later when she was home and went through her photo she had no idea she'd photographed it okay I think the animal's moving and the reason why I say that is because you really can only see one front leg. Um, the back leg seems to be behind the branch there of the tea tree. The tail um, is a bit lost in there but it does look like it's quite a long tail coming out to a point to the left there. It's a bit pixelated there because I've zoomed up on it. Now there's that reference photo of that um, thylacine in the zoo there on a similar angle and you can see the ears do stick out quite far on some specimens of thylacines um, which is you know what I think this photo may be um, and it's clearly you know looking down on the same sort of angle there's another filter I had there I, I don't have Photoshop everyone who thinks I make things up you know you're just confused because I'm clearly not a uh, computer whiz um, if that's a kangaroo, it's got a really big head um, and the tail is certainly really quite long as well. Um, could be a roo, but mm, I'm thinking that it's probably not a roo and it probably is a quadruped. Uh, someone might say it's a kelpie, it's a stray dog, whatever. There's the original shot again um, and it's an interesting shot nonetheless. So yeah, see what you think. Uh, the other thing is too, um, I recently found a scat that I've sent in to be tested. Well, 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 said the grave digger. Look what we have here. It looks like something else has been here marking. A lot of ants in that. That's almost like an echidna scat, but they usually look like a cigar and smooth but there's lots of insects in all that so I'm not too sure what's left that stuff but that is classic colour classic diameter thylaturd there's the other part of it there and there's the little plug that comes off at the end right there so I'll bag this up there's another section of it there there's a little bit of 
hair and stuff there that looks like it might have been um, even gagged up. I'm not too sure. But that's big. That's fat. That's well over an inch round. Probably an inch and a quarter. Big. That's a devil, man. That's a big devil. Real big. So I'm um, waiting to hear back about that. Um, and it was pretty fresh. That's why I sent it in. I don't send in old ones anymore because there's just no point. But this one was a pretty fresh scat. It was pretty big. Um, certainly looked either devil or thyla to me um, anyone's guess I suppose but hopefully the DNA comes back with a hit um, and one other thing too is um, a member who lives out in the northeast of Tassie uh, sent me some print photos that were really interesting and he uh, managed to get them cast or a couple of them cast and I've got them there as well so little bits of evidence keep coming in all the time so here you have one of the fresh prints that he found on his property on the left there. Um, doesn't look too conspicuous. Um, that's his um, 22, 23 kilogram Kelpie on the right there, which is a Kelpie point across, and the mystery print on the left. When you cast them though, you get a bit of a different kind of view. As you can see, the print on the left there has got rather splayed toes uh, with large gaps between them and elongated toes. They're almost a little bit like little fat sausages when you have a look, uh, a closer look. Here it is again, only a little bit more enlarged. Um, and you can see the classic dog-shaped print from the Kelpie on the right. And then this typical, you know, what I call a thylacine print that we find all over Australia on the left. And just another example of that, um, that classic thylacine type print here's a juvenile what i believe to be a thylacine print that i found out at the beach and there's my kelpie um you know they're completely different looking prints so yeah take it or leave it um i believe that we're onto something with these prints next i've got a fresh kill for you So I've got me a fresh roadkill here from last night. Still limp. Alright. Look at this. <coughs> Something's had a m ma rather nasty bite. And it looks like they've got disturbed, I would say. I mean, it could be devils, but. Devils will probably drag it off the road and eat it, not chew on it in the middle of the road. That's had a fair old munch out of its neck. But might just be the damage from the vehicle. But it looks like it's been preyed on. And whatever was preying on it. Got disturbed. Probably went into the bush over there somewhere. I'll see what it's like when I come back through. See if any bits more are missing. So, in closing, anyway, re with regards to um, the uh, photo, I like I've said it's ambiguous and it's not 100% conclusive but I have said that before and people seem to forget when I say that not to worry um, it's a really interesting silhouette of an animal she certainly felt that it was a thylacine from looking at it um, and I I think the fact that it's got a very straight back and a rather large head sort of rules out wallaby certainly not a freaking patty melon um, the only other thing it really could be as far as I can tell is a wallaby it, it, you know, it may be a wallaby, but um, I think you'll find it's probably moving. Um, she's disturbed it. She just randomly took the photos when she got to the spot, and she didn't even know she had the photo there until a few days later when she uh, got back and went through her phone and just saw it and thought, well, that's an interesting silhouette of an animal. So we're still pushing. We're still going hard. We're still very anti-cloning because, let's face it, you know, whatever it is they create out of this $5 million that they got, it's not going to be a thylacine. <laughs> Far from it. 
um, thylacine is just a trendy word to use to attract funding and to attract attention to your uh, projects I guess but you know so be it they can run around and lay claims to fame on all of this science and we'll stick with some basic biology 101 and see what mother nature's got out there in store for us because um, that's where it's at take it easy <laughs>